In this video, I'll describe a precise way to think about continuity of a function at a point. Here are graphs of three functions. Take a moment to think about whether there are any values of x for which these functions are not continuous. Many people are told to imagine a pencil tracing along the graph. If we do this for the first graph, it looks like we don't have to pick up the pencil. If that is how we identify continuity, then this function looks continuous for all values of x. For the second function, we can trace along the graph, and we have to pick up our pencil at x equals 1 and move it to a different part of the graph. So this looks like it's not continuous, and in particular, there is a jump discontinuity at x equals 1. For the third graph, we trace, and it appears that we have to pick up the pencil to place the dot at x equals 4 before finishing the trace. So this looks like it's not continuous, and, in particular, there is a removable discontinuity at x equals 4. Unfortunately, it turns out that the first graph is also not continuous. How can this be? Sometimes relying on a picture can lead you to an incorrect conclusion. In order to address this issue, we'll need a more precise definition of continuity. Here is what it means for a function f to be continuous at the value a if the limit as x approaches a of f of x is equal to the function evaluated at a. There are three conditions that are implicit in this definition. First, f of a has to be defined, that is, you have to be able to evaluate f of x at x equals a. Next, the limit of f of x as x approaches a has to exist. Finally, the limit is equal to the value of f evaluated at a. If any one of these three conditions is not met, then f is not continuous at a, and a would be called a point of discontinuity. Let's see how these conditions relate to the three initial examples. First, let's look at the function with the jump discontinuity. We can see from the graph that f evaluated at x equals 1 is equal to 2, so f of 1 is defined, and we have satisfied the first condition. Next, let's think about the second condition. If we look at the limit of f of x as x approaches 1 from the left, this appears to be equal to 5. However, if we look at the limit of f of x as x approaches 1 from the right, this appears to be equal to 2. So the overall limit does not exist because the limits from the left and right don't match. And the second condition is not met. Since we haven't met one of these conditions, then f is not continuous at x equals 1. Next, let's look at the function with a removable discontinuity. Based on the graph, f evaluated at x equals 4 is equal to 3. So f of 4 is defined and we have satisfied the first condition. For the second condition, if we look at the limit of f of x as x approaches 4 from the left, it appears to be equal to 1.6. Also, if we look at the limit of f of x as x approaches 4 from the right, it also appears to be equal to 1.6. So, the overall limit is 1.6, and the second condition is satisfied. However, 1.6, the value of the limit, does not equal 3, the value of f evaluated at 4. So we haven't satisfied this third condition, and this function is not continuous at x equals 4. Now what about the very first example we looked at? When we used the informal notion of continuity, this function appeared to be continuous. It turns out that this is a graph of the function f of x equals x squared minus 4 divided by x minus 2. Let's take a look at x equals 2 and Think about the three conditions. If we look at the formula for f of x, if you tried to evaluate this at x equals 2, then you'd end up dividing by 0. So f of x is undefined at x equals 2. Since a single point is infinitesimally small, you wouldn't be able to see this on the graph itself. Although, if we know in advance that f is undefined at a point, the convention is to place an open circle on the graph at x equals 2. So f of 2 isn't defined. We haven't satisfied this first condition, so f of x is not continuous at x equals 2. Let's look at another example. 
Here is a function that is defined as two separate pieces and appears to have a sharp corner at x equals zero. Pause the video and decide whether this function is continuous at x equals zero. Using the equation for f to evaluate f of zero, we need to use the bottom formula since it applies for values of x greater than or equal to zero. Plugging in zero for x, we get that f of zero is equal to one, so f of zero is defined. Thinking about condition two, if we look at the limit from the left, to compute its value, we'll use the top formula. As x gets close to zero, these values produced by the formula get close to one. For the limit from the right, we use the bottom formula, and we get that this limit is also one. So the overall limit from both directions as x approaches zero is one, and we have satisfied the second condition. Finally, we can see that both f of zero and the limit are equal to one, so the third condition is satisfied. So this function is continuous at x equals zero, even though the graph has a corner at x equals zero. Let's look at one more example. Here is a graph of the function x times sine of one over x. Pause the video and decide whether this function is continuous at x equals zero. If we just look at the graph, it looks like f of zero might be equal to zero, and the limit from the left looks like it would be equal to zero, as does the limit from the right. Let's take a closer look at x equals zero. Now we can see that the number of oscillations increases without bound as x approaches zero. But even though we have these infinite oscillations, multiplying by values of x close to zero has a sort of squeezing effect that allows the limit to exist and be equal to zero, satisfying the second condition. If we just look at the graph, we might think that f of zero is defined. However, when we look at x equals zero, sine of one over x is undefined, so we haven't satisfied the first condition, and this function is not continuous. To summarize what we've seen, we've seen a formal definition of continuity and used examples to explore the three conditions, that f is defined at x equals a, the limit as x goes to a of f of x exists, and that the limit is equal to the value of f at x equals a.